Hey guys, this is Mr. Beto890 here, and today I'm going to be talking about um, Vince McMahon and whether he is, like a lot of people have been saying um, in recent months, whether he is out of touch and doesn't know what is best for the WWE product. Um, and you know what? I would agree com completely. I think Vince, he's, you know, he's almost 70 years old, and, you know, he's, so obviously he's not going to get any younger. Uh, I just, I think it's time that Vince McMahon, you know, in the next few years, kind of stood down for, from, have, you know, being in charge of the WWE. And I think the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast especially kind of showed this in my opinion because of some of the things he was talking about how about Cesaro um, grabbing the brass ring and you know also the fact of just the ro talking about the roster in general and okay so let's just start off with what he said about Cesaro he said that Cesaro had the great had you know the good the good look the good sort of in-ring ability but he said he lacked in Charisma and verbal skills. So I kind of th thought about. I kind of was thinking. I, I, I kind of. I look back on some of the kind of legends in the WWE and even current wrestlers. So you look at someone like a Bret Hart. And Bret Hart. Bret Hart, you was a charismatic wrestler. However, he didn't necessarily have to should be charismatic through all his you know through being verbal on the mic and stuff, that's not how it worked with Bret Hart. You know, being, you know, showing, having charisma doesn't necessarily have to be being good on the mic. People show it in different ways. For example, Bret Hart exerts charisma. Does he necessarily, you know, have good, you know, necessarily the best on the mic? No. He usually showed charisma through his wrestling ability. And then you look at someone like you know, someone at the top, so one of the guys that, you know, WWE considers to be one of the all-time greats, Randy Orton. Is Orton necessarily, you know, the most kind of, like, one of the great re wrestlers on the mic? No, if anything, in my opinion, I think Randy Orton's very boring, in my opinion. And I, you know, it, so in that logic, Randy Orton has no sort of charisma or anything. Hell, look at one of the guys they're trying to push as, you know, the future of WWE, Roman Reigns. He's not necessarily gifted on the mic. And, you know, God, WWE keep forcing Roman Reigns to cut these awkward promos that he's clearly not comfortable doing. And yet they still force him to do stuff, whereas I think having Reigns on the mic isn't necessarily the way to go. He should be one of those silent, deadly types. But anyway, with Cesaro, you know, people saying that people aren't connecting with him because... You know, of because of this factor, and that's completely untrue. I mean, when Cesaro first did the Cesaro swing, which I believe was uh, 2013 Battlegrounds, so that would have been around about October time. So that was when Cesaro really started to get reaction. People loved the giant swing move because it was, you know, a great show of strength, and you know, the crowd could get involved. They could start counting the amount of swings and everything. And you know, his popularity really grew from there, and then. You know, he reached the peak of his popularity when he won the Andre the Giant, you know, Battle Memorial. Yeah, the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. And, you know, the next night on Roy had great reactions, but it started to slow down when, you know, he was aligned with Paul Heyman and he just wasn't really going anywhere. And there was no kind of, like, direct direction with Cesaro. They just kind of put, it, put him with Paul Heyman, didn't know what to do with him, put him in a title match with Sheamus at Payback. And they just had no no real direction for him. They just maybe throw him in a t few title ma mid card title matches here and there. But they have no direction with him. And now he's in a tag team with Tyson Kidd. Um, this is really going nowhere. I just don't see. I just I don't see Cesaro going anywhere in the near future. So again, I think Vince again Vince Vince McMahon is clearly you know not understanding the fact that you know Cesaro doesn't need to be great on the mic in order to be, you know, a successful 
wrestler in the future of WWE because we've, like I said, we've seen wrestlers past and present who've done this without having necessarily the great mic skills and exerted charisma through other ways. So, again, that's just a stupid comment that Vince McMahon made. And um, then he went on to talk about how the reason there's not many top guys in the WWE is because of no one's grabbing the brass ring. You know, no one's... Everyone's playing a bit too safe. But hi, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Let's just, let's just go back to, say, 2011. Wasn't CM Punk trying to grab the brass ring? That whole Summer of Punk angle? The whole, you know, him trying to... Speaking out for the being the voice of the voices, all that. Wasn't he... You know, trying to grab the brass ring. You know, all the, all the stuff he went through. Wasn't he trying to grab the brass ring? Hell, look at some of the stuff that Ambrose... You know, now, right now, the stuff that Ambrose and Wyatt and you know, Rollins... They've been putting on some really good matches and feuds in recent... Would they not be trying to grab the brass ring? You know, even I even go f as far back to 2009. Someone like... Someone like a Kofi Kingston, who they put in a feud with Randy Orton. You know, he was really, you know, going places. And because of stupid people like Randy Orton, who, you know, he did the finishing sequence to a match or something wrong, so they de-push him. Hell, I even look even further back to someone like an Edge. Again, Edge in 2006 trying to grab that brass ring. But no, he ends up going into this feud with Cena and ends up losing. Again... It's not the fact, it's the fact that WWE cuts people off because they don't, you know, there's certain things about them they maybe don't like or they don't like them for personal reasons. And again, it's just, again, showing Vince has no idea that the kind of, you know, talent he's got on his roster. So then, then we go on to how the reasons for ending the Undertaker's streak at WrestleMania 30 and he explains why they chose Brock Lesnar. Um, again, this is a, a very stupid reason. And Vince was saying how there was no one on the roster ready to defeat The Undertaker. It had to be done at this year's WrestleMania to Brock Lesnar. So I, I just think to myself two things. Firstly, if there's no one right to do it, don't do it. I mean, is it that... So, I mean, I would never... I just thought the Undertaker streak should never end. But no, we have to, you know... Because there's no one on the roster in the, in the, in the, you know, the present or near future, we have to end the streak. Don't end the streak! Just don't end the streak! It's that simple. I don't understand that, the logic in that. And then... Also, the fact that this, this streak, how long has this streak been going on? It's, over, it's 22 years. 22 years, The Undertaker has had that, you know, 22 years that streak's been around. So you're telling me that in those 22 years, even, say, in the recent... Obviously, I know the streak didn't become relevant until about, you know, when it got to about, you know, f uh, 15, 14 and 0. You're telling me you had no... You know, you didn't. You know, you had no one to kind of early on to groom them to get ready to end the streak or have any idea. You know what? This guy could be a potential streak ender. Let's build him up. You had no kind of thought, kind of yeah. You know, maybe we should build this guy up as a potential threat and everything like that. Did that never come across your mind? Again, Vince just having no idea that having no idea that you know these the. the you know, idea. It shows he's not thinking ahead to the future of the WWE, and there's no, there's no long-term plans, and that he has, he's just out of touch, and he's, just, he's just, he just doesn't know what to do anymore. And this is why I just think Vince McMahon is out of touch, and I think we need to, he needs to, you know, retire and. Just, you know, leave the WWE alone. And if you look at something like an NXT, an NXT is, in arguably, you could argue NXT is a better place to be than the WWE. 
Because you're being put in storylines that make sense. You've put in, you know, yeah, you're put in storylines that make sense, and you, you know, you're given, you know, people in NXT are given a lot more TV time and stuff than I would say a lot of the main roster does, just in my opinion. I, and that's, you know, Vince doesn't ha really have any kind of control over NXT, so I just think as soon as the sooner Vince goes, the better, in my opinion. Anyway, that's the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. This has been Mr. Beetle890. Signing out.